Flooding rains across much of central and eastern Kentucky tracking the very latest on the flood threat and now the increasing threat for heavy snows. We'll show you how much falls just ahead. That heavy rain is making driving difficult in some places. We're live in Lexington tracking road conditions. And thousands of students got to school today, then had to leave early, which school systems didn't want to take any chances. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Palumbo. The winter storm has moved into the bluegrass. Right now, it's raining in central and eastern Kentucky, and that's causing some minor flooding. This is a live look at road conditions on New Circle Road in Lexington. As the temperatures drop, that rain will turn to sleet and snow, and we're expecting significant amounts. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking it all on this first alert severe weather day. And Chris, right now the concern is flooding. Yeah, that is the short-term concern. And as we go into the evening, we'll shift that focus over to the heavy sleet and snow. Flood warnings are out for just about every county across central and eastern Kentucky for a lot of lowland flooding, low-lying, traditional flood-prone areas getting in on some high water. Covering several roads out there. Obviously, uh, you want to slow down, take it easy, never try to drive through a flooded roadway. Rains continue across central and eastern Kentucky as of now, coming down at a very heavy clip still. So, we're going to continue to increase the high water potential into southern and southeastern Kentucky. Look what's starting to take place, though, across the northern sections of the area. That switch to sleet and snow is now well underway already. Reports of snow on the ground in a part to northern Kentucky, and that line is going to continue to work its way on toward the southeast as we go through the next several hours. So, rainfall totals. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell joining me now, looking on our day so far. And, Jim, we're talking about a lot of areas picking up one or two inches of water already on the day, enough to call. Flooding. Yeah, and you've got to think that these people haven't had a good chance, especially in southeastern Kentucky, to dry out at all. They were melting snow, heavy rains from last week. Now they're seeing more flood issues. You can just see the map there. It is absolutely covered up with some heavier amounts of precipitation, especially to our north, believe it or not. The heaviest rain really hasn't picked up in intensity across southern and eastern parts of Kentucky as of yet. And again, that's where we're seeing more of the widespread isolated flood issues. Now, there you see some of the totals where you see the yellow. And the darker greens uh, up to the north, that's where some of the heaviest moisture has been here over the last 48 hours. Down to the south, they're getting closer and closer to seeing some of those uh, higher totals. Just around central Kentucky, I'll show you a couple of spots really quickly uh, out toward Bourbon County, coming in almost two inches of rainfall. That is a lot of water with saturated ground. And then you throw in the snow melt. We go down into parts of southeastern Kentucky, just a couple of little locations. Well, that's the Hal Rogers Parkway. We'll click another little link here, and there you see only half inch showing up as far as radar estimates are concerned. We're also going to throw on uh, some of the storm reports. Look at all of these. These are all high water issues, at least in Kentucky. You can see a few flakes of snow up to the north where they've been picking up on more issues uh, through there across southern parts of uh, Indiana and also into Kentucky, the northern parts of Kentucky. A couple of tips. Of course, the obvious one, move to higher ground. Turn around, don't drown. What that means, if you come across water over the road, do not drive through it. We're talking about flooding right now, Chris, but we've got that winter storm warning that's coming our way and the snow that's already starting to crash in. That's going to be the attention getter tonight. Yeah, that's right. Now we can to kind of turn the page toward the winter part of this actual storm. Winter storm warning for the entire state through Thursday for the potential for a swath of 8 to 14 inches of snow. Really haven't made very very many changes to this map at all over the past 24 hours. Lighter amounts to farther south and southeast that we go where you have a better chance of sleet that will begin to mix in into the southeastern corner of the state. Now, live first alert defender as of now showing some heavy rains here across southern Kentucky. Look what's happening into the bluegrass region. Rain, then you get into northern parts of Franklin County, northern Scott County, Harrison County, and north. Getting the switch over now to sleet and snow. Reports of some moderate snow already covering the ground into parts of Grant County. Extend that out a little bit. Put everything in motion. This is just the beginning. Look at all the moisture that is off to our west and southwest. Jennifer, we have this front that is to our south now, allowing that wave of low pressure to develop along it. So we're going to see a very heavy band of snow develop as we go through the evening into the overnight. So we make that transition to flooding into the heavy snow and sleet over the next few hours. Thank you, Chris. We'll check back in in about 15 minutes. Kentucky emergency management officials say all this rain is causing minor to moderate flooding right now, and that could make driving dangerous in some places. Sean Moody is tracking road conditions right now in Lexington. He's live to continue our top story team 
weather coverage at 4. Sean? Now, good afternoon, Jennifer. If you need a place to keep your car off the roads as the storm comes in, you can do that here at the Rupp Arena parking lot uh, that's just off Oliver Lewis Way. That's one of the announcements Mayor Jim Gray made in his press conference this afternoon. Mayor, Mayor Gray is urging drivers to stay off the roads this evening. He said the city's streets and roads workers and emergency management workers have been planning for the storm and are ready to go. Now, of course, this storm comes just a couple of weeks after the last big one, and Mayor Gray said the city learned some lessons from that one that they're applying today. During the last storm, several people had their cars blocked in after the plows came through. If you need a place to put your car, you can park in the Rupp Arena lot just off Oliver Lewis Way for free. You'll need to move it, of course, by Saturday morning. Lexington police will be patrolling this lot to make sure things stay safe. The streets and roads workers are already working 12-hour shifts. Of course, they can't pre-treat the roads in conditions like this because of the rain, but those workers are checking catch basins and storm drains, trying to prevent flooding. If you see high water, don't try to drive or walk through it. Police say they're bringing in extra officers through the weekend. The all-wheel drive vehicles versus the Crown Victorias that we have, so we've increased those vehicles right now and brought more into service. And we're using those on a 24-7 rotation to make sure that we can provide service. So we've upped our staffing all through the weekend to cover all the major events and got the vehicles in place. And the mayor also said that the Office of Homelessness uh, Prevention and Intervention has also activated their winter weather plan. If you need shelter or you know someone who needs to find shelter, you can call 211 to get more information. Live in Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. A number of school systems decided to dismiss early today because of all the rain and what's coming next. Montgomery County Schools dismissed two hours early. This is what it looked like earlier today in Mount Sterling. Bunker Hill Road was closed for a two-mile stretch in Montgomery County because of flooding. Harlan County and Bourbon County Schools also closed early today. You can get a complete list of closings and delays at WKYT.com. Coming up at 4.30, Montgomery County emergency officials talk about their decision. You can always track severe weather wherever you are on WKYT.com. The interactive First Alert Defender lets you zoom into your neighborhood. You can also download the WKYT First Alert Defender radar app for your iPad or smartphone. Now to some stories making headlines across the nation at four. The Justice Department says it will not prosecute former Ferguson, Missouri police officer Darren Wilson in the shooting death of an unarmed black 18-year-old that led to weeks of protests. Federal officials say there was no evidence to disprove Wilson's testimony that he feared for his safety and that there wasn't reliable evidence that Michael Brown had his hands up when he was shot. But in a report released today, the department criticizes the city and its law enforcement for racial bias. Wilson was previously cleared by a Missouri grand jury. The Supreme Court is hearing arguments in another case challenging the Affordable Care Act. This time, the justices are deciding who is eligible for the law's tax subsidies that make health insurance affordable for millions of Americans. Craig Boswell has more on what's at stake. Stand up, fight back! Supporters of the Affordable Care Act made their case outside the Supreme Court. Inside, Justice Elena Kagan described the latest legal challenge as a, quote, never-ending saga. At issue, whether people who live in states that don't run their own exchanges are eligible for subsidies to help pay for health insurance. We believe there is a better way to take care of people who need help. Michael Carvin, the plaintiff's lawyer, points to four words in the law established by the state. He argued people who buy insurance from the federal exchange are not entitled to subsidies. Justice Kagan and I had a candid exchange of viewpoints. I'm sure at the end of it, I persuaded her, uh, but uh, I would remind you that there's nine justices. Justice Anthony Kennedy, often the court's swing vote, aggressively questioned both sides. Conservative justices Samuel Alito and Antonin Scalia joined him in grilling the government's lawyer. The government argued Congress intended people in all 50 states to be eligible for subsidies no matter who runs the exchange. Questions Brian Pinero helps companies navigate the Affordable sides. Care Act. If they strike down the subsidies, 5 million people are going to not have what makes it affordable to them to have health care. White House lawyers and several members of Congress were in the courtroom for the arguments, closely monitoring the law's fate. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the Supreme Court. The court is expected to issue a ruling in late June.